I got a 3D printer unboxing, which I'm always super excited about. Inside this box is the latest mini printer from my friends at WeDo. This is their Tina 2 3D printer. And if I'm not mistaken, this is also the 3D printer that Monoprice is selling as their new $200 budget 3D printer to replace the Monoprice Select Mini line of 3D printers. I'm not going to talk much about this printer because this is just unboxing and when you're unboxing I can't tell you how it works, I can't tell you how it goes, I could just tell you how the unboxing goes. So far so good. So while I'm unboxing this printer I'm going to go ahead and talk about something that happened to me recently that gave me serious pause for thought. I had somebody interview me recently and they kept calling me an engineer and I had to say well I, I'm not I'm not an engineer I don't I don't know why you want me to call myself an engineer because I'm not but then they asked me why am I not an engineer and boy I had to think about that one I had to think about if I'm not an engineer what am I and, and what is an engineer and this led me to a whole range of thought, a whole range of ideas and expectations. Now, I want to preface this discussion by saying that what I state here, what I'm thinking, is just my opinion. If you disagree, if you feel like what I say and the way I define these words doesn't match up with how you want to define yourself, that's fine. Don't let somebody on the internet tell you what you can call yourself just because he calls himself a professor even though he hasn't been inside a college for years. Well, there it is. Pretty easy to get out of that box. So, thinking about this idea of not being an engineer, I had to think that the reason was because in my mind, an engineer has education. They have a degree. They have some, some level of schooling under their belt that came from a formal place and that, like any formal education, maybe didn't include just focusing on the basics, but included all stuff that isn't that important but is important. An engineer understands safety concerns because they've taken a safety class. And while they might never need to know how to build a bridge safely, they learned how to build a bridge safely. All of these things are important to the process of education. Gaining more knowledge than you actually need so that your understanding is broader. Me, I just figure out how to do what I want to do and then do it. And by all means, I'm probably forgetting some important parts of the discussion and the learning that I need in order to be able to do this. And But I'm getting the job done. I'm just slapping stuff together and making it look the way that I want. I, I consider myself, well, this is where it got tricky, but a maker. Now, when I thought, well, I'm a maker, I started to think, well, what makes a person a maker? And I started to think, I, I had this scenario open up in my mind where I would say, you know, I remember when I was a maker. Like, I could lose the status of being a maker, and I thought, well, what makes a maker? Now, the answer to what makes a maker seemed pretty obvious to me at the time. A maker is somebody who makes things, but not just who makes things. A maker has an idea for a project and they see it through from beginning, planning, execution, possibly even building the tools that they need to be able to finish the job and then seeing it through to the end. And I know a lot of makers, people who consider themselves makers, who are constantly making and especially making the tools but never finishing that one big project that got them into it. But they still consider themselves makers and yeah, I, I would too. Partially because, again, I wouldn't ever deny anybody 
calling themselves what they want to call themselves. But yeah, they're still making. And so in my mind, they get to call themselves a maker, no problem. So that became the definition of a maker to me. Somebody who makes something, sees a project through from beginning to end. So let's take a look here. All right, tiny little roll of filament, tiny little filament. Look. 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 It's actually a substantial amount. That'll, that'll do a couple of sample grips for sure. But in this process, I also thought, well, What's less than a maker, less than an engineer and not quite a maker? On the other end of that demarcation, there has to be something. And in my mind, there are a group of people, a lot of people who, they're not quite makers, but they like the maker community. They like the idea of being a maker and they like to play with the maker toys and tools. These people to me are tinkerers fiddlers, people who just, well, not fiddlers because that would be playing with a fiddle, but people who just like to, well, maybe they like to take things apart and maybe they like to put things back together, but they don't like to make new things with them. And there's nothing wrong with being a tinkerer. A tinkerer is the sort of person who buys a 3D printer and then only prints things that they download online. They never use it to make something that they themselves have invented or designed. Maybe a tinker is somebody who takes the designs that other people have come up with and follow the instructions and go through to the end. Yes, they've made something, but they didn't really do the creation and invention part. They just followed through with the steps. And the process of going from being a tinkerer to a maker is a very thin line. And I think that people who are tinkerers by my definition might want to call themselves makers and that's fine. But personally, I feel like that line had to be drawn so that I would remember that yes, I can be making but not be a maker if I'm not trying to invent as part of that. And maybe that's faulty. Leave a comment below if you think that yeah, tinkerers absolutely should be maker. You don't have to invent to be a maker. If, if you disagree with me, let me know. But for me, for my own sake, I defined myself as a maker only if I'm doing the full spectrum. Where's this plug in? Plug on here. Power up there. Oh, there's another power box. That makes sense. I kind of wish that this, this was mounted in here somewhere, so that we just kind of get permanent part of it. Mm. In exploring this topic, I came up with or heard another term that I, I kind of had to figure out where it fit in this whole idea. The idea of a hacker, not somebody who is trying to overcome cybersecurity, but a lot of people, when maker spaces started to become a thing, created their maker space but called them a hacker space. Maybe it was because they didn't want association with the maker brand, but they are essentially the same as makers. And so do hackers deserve their own designation? And is that designation more or less than a maker? Is that designation more or less than a tinker? Or does it sit somewhere lateral with these ideas or between them or within them? <sighs> I'm not really sure. And I'd love to have your thoughts on the subject in the comments below as well. But there we go. I'm not an engineer because I don't have the education for it. I could call myself a maker, but I have to keep making to do it. And if I ever lose that, well, maybe I'll go back to being a tinkerer or maybe some people who are just tinkering, but maybe don't feel confident enough to call themselves a maker. They can call themselves a tinkerer until they cross that threshold and actually make something. Although maybe following somebody else's instructions online and making something, but making something that you had no idea how to make can make you a maker. Or maybe even just following those instructions, but making one little twist, one little thing to make it your own makes you the maker. I don't know. And maybe this whole thing is entirely frivolous because 
like I said, I'm not going to deny anybody the right and privilege to call themselves a maker if they want to. Because if you feel like you're a maker, you're a maker. You don't have to set up a booth at the Maker Fair. You don't have to have business cards or an identity. If you make, you're a maker. And I would also include in that if you knit and crochet, if you do sewing, if you do any level of making at all, if you're an artist, a sculptor, a painter, if you write, heck, if you make a complete book, I would allow you to call yourself a maker. Cooking, uh, what else? So many ways to be a maker, so many ways to express our creativity and make something and make the world a better place, then they all count and I am willing to leave it wide open for that. But what do you think? Do you agree with me on this particular demarcation of names or am I completely off? And uh, where do you fit in this array of ideas? Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there and hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers, and if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first, because I care about you, and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. I slow down my talking during this part because this stuff is just so darn noisy.